Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm Dr. Lawrence Cardano, audiologist and director of Hearing Center of Long Island, and I am so glad to be here today with Dr. Keith Darrow, PhD, for what I think is going to be really an interesting discussion on the topic of proper treatment of hearing loss and how it can help maintain and improve mental acuity, uh, prevent cognitive decline and dementia, as well as an important new nationwide clinical study on this topic that Dr. Darrow is launching and how you might be able to benefit from it. Hey, uh, thank you so much for having me here, Dr. Cardano. Yeah. Always love working with you, working with your team. And, and you know, we are our brothers from New York. And so great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, well, and I appreciate it. You know, we, we've been working together, I think it's a, almost four years now. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's you've really been helping me and my staff to follow through on our commitment to ourselves and our patients to uh, do the best job possible and provide the best possible care. So we uh, we appreciate that. Well, and, look, I think between between you, Dr. Cardano, yeah. Dr. Lazaro, I, I I mean this when I say it. I actually send family members back in the New York area to mm -hmm. your practice. That's how much you know that I love and I trust you and your team because I, I wouldn't just send them to anybody. So right. I know when you want the best medical care, when you want to, to live your best life, when you want to increase your chances at longevity and independence, there's nobody better in the New York City area than the hearing centers of Long Island. Well, I, I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I, I'm so eager to get into this topic, but let me just first mention a little bit um, about you, because I know you're too humble to say this yourself. But uh, for people that don't know you, I just try to very briefly, briefly give you a little introduction. Dr. Darrow is an MIT and Harvard trained neuroscientist, also a clinical audiologist, a professor at Worcester State University in Massachusetts, an Amazon bestselling author an expert in speech and hearing science, a nationally known trainer and lecturer and researcher, among other things. So um, yeah, just to welcome you, uh, and I appreciate you being here. For no, people thank that you. I, I appreciate that. Look, I, I wake up every day, as do you, fighting the good fight, trying to get out word about the importance of addressing hearing loss and tinnitus as we age. Look, you've heard me lecture this a thousand times. The great thing about modern medicine is in the past 120 years, we have nearly doubled the lifespan, which means we've only had about 50 years to really start to understand what happens as we age. And probably at the forefront of medical science in the last decade has been, wow, we thought hearing loss was just not a big deal. It's just something that happens as we get older. But now we're realizing the implications of living with untreated hearing loss and tinnitus. Dare I say, undertreated hearing loss mm. and tinnitus also is a concern and how that increases your risk of, of losing your home, of losing your independence, mm. of reducing your quality of life. Uh, it, it more likely to fall and end up in a hospital, more likely to end up with cognitive decline and dementia. Mm. I think the medical data is clear, and now it's our job to get the word out. Absolutely. And you know, of course, we see, you know, in our office, we see patients all the time that it w w in sad situations where they just waited too long to take care of it because they probably just didn't understand. Um, so we're trying to correct that and make sure that people are educated. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this little discussion with you today. Well, look, I, here, here it is. Like for those of you that, that may not watch the entire thing, I'm going to leave you with this one important note right up front. The, the, the medical community has come together and now agrees upon the early treatment of hearing loss is the single most important thing you can do to prevent cognitive decline and dementia. Period. It's not number five on the list. It's not number 12. Mm. It's number one by yeah. an overwhelming amount. And so yeah. that tidbit right there, yeah. hopefully will get you to take action and, and just say, hey, I live in the Long Island area, in the Queens area. I want to go check out what Dr. Cardano yeah. and his team is talking about. Yeah, that's an important point. Let me just mention, you know, you know, I do a lot of public speaking myself and 
when I mention just the facts, if I'm talking to a group and I mention the facts and I, and I just mentioned that fact that hearing loss is the number one modifiable risk factor for dementia, it's not unusual to have someone in the back of the room raise their hand and be kind of um, annoyed maybe or uh, kind of push back against that. And I, usually it's one of two things. Either they say, uh, sometimes they'll say, uh, which probably the most common thing is, I've been to all, a, number of, all, all, a number of doctors. I've told them that I have a hist family history of dementia. They did all kinds of tests on me and so forth. They never mentioned anything about hearing. So it's something that is well known in the literature, but not necessarily no, well known, not only among the public, but sometimes even among the professionals. Well, look, you're, you're talking about moving a mountain, right? You're talking about getting an entire medical field on board. And, and if you look back, no matter what field you're talking about, be it vision, be it dementia, be it hearing, be it cancer, you know, medical reports and research comes out and it can take anywhere up to a decade for the current practicing clinicians to actually catch on and finally embrace. What you and I are trying to do is to shrink that time period so that everybody, be it, you know, the lay person who's non-medical, be it the, the referring ear, nose and throat specialist or the primary care physician down the street to understand the importance of hearing. And that's why you and I are always out on the lecture circuit trying to educate as many people as possible. Right. And I think, you know, you and I, I think, have both had uh, uh, relatives that have had dementia. So it could be a heartbreaking thing. And so, you know, that it, it, it's a personal thing, and, but it's also we realize how important it is. Look, uh, I the, just to, to that point, yeah. Dr. Cardano, yeah. here's another thing that I want people to understand. Most people think it's, oh, well, if I diet and exercise, sleep, yes, that's important, but not nearly as important as addressing your hearing loss earlier. Here's what we know. Mm -hmm. Four in 10 cases, 40%. That means my grandmother. That means my Aunt Donna. That means the people I love that I've lost to dementia. If I knew then what I know now, that four in 10 cases of dementia are considered preventable. Mm -hmm. I I just, you know, I, I can't, I can't change the past, but mm -hmm. I can try to change today and tomorrow through talking to you, being able to publish this, being able to put out some of my best-selling books like Preventing Decline and Stop Living in Isolation so that more people understand how important it is to address hearing loss to reduce that risk of decline and dementia. It, that is so important. And, you know, I think you, you and I could probably talk about this the, all day long, <laughs> but let me just make sure I don't forget to focus on sure. um, the um, we are, this, um, something we're very, you know, interested and excited about this upcoming study. You know, a couple of weeks ago, you and I were on a large Zoom call with a lot of other audiologists from around the country who, like me, are going to be local study coordinators for the new cognition and hearing and cognition study at sites all over the country. And so we talked about some of the nuts and bolts of the study. We talked about some of the procedures, what kind of data we were going to collect. But we also talked about the reason for the study, uh, what's so important about this study, uh, why, um, how this uh, study can uh, benefit in the long term the 50 million people struggling with hearing loss, and how it can really be a benefit to people who uh, take advantage of the opportunity per to participate, you know, in this um, uh, in this study. And so, Larry. So, 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 Dr. Cardano, look. Yeah. This will now be the third time that I'm going to say it. Yeah. Treatment of hearing loss has been shown to potentially reduce the risk of cognitive decline and dementia. That data is out there. It's been in the literature for over five years. But here's the missing link. Mm. What is it about treating hearing loss that actually reduces that risk? That's exactly what we're studying. And I am so grateful to mm. practices like yourself all across the country, from Florida mm. to Hawaii to Texas to Alaska, New York City, that have joined on board and said, we want to be part of this. We want to help uncover 
how it is that treating hearing loss can reduce the risk. So here's what we're doing. It's it's very simple. Mm-hmm. You and I are doing this on a daily basis. When a patient comes in to begin treating their hearing loss, we actually do a quick cognitive screening. This takes five minutes. This is an FDA cleared cognitive screening. It's it's computerized. It's like playing a little video game from the 80s. It's got a little joystick. Yeah. And in doing so, we're able to assess things like memory, uh, executive function, so your ability to make decisions. We're, we're studying your visual spatial memory, so your ability to remember what you see. And we're also looking at processing speed and reaction time. Again, five minutes, that's all it takes. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to get a baseline measurement on day one. And then we're going to check that same cognitive test. We're going to do it again 60 days later. And then we're going to do it six months later right? Because there are hints in the literature that Mm. treating hearing loss can increase memory, can increase uh, executive function, can increase processing speed and selective attention. And so we want to quantify that in what will be the nation's largest study to Mm. actually look at, are we seeing these improvements? And then you can can really start to draw the line Mm. between the dots of we started treating hearing loss, the cognitive performance, memory, attention, processing speed, they've increased. And that may be what is actually helping people stay out of cognitive decline and dementia. Yeah, you know, and one of the reasons that this is so interesting, one of the reasons uh, I know the word excited is overused, but one of the reasons that my staff and I are so excited about this study is that, you know, we've been using uh, this the F the only FDA cleared technology for this purpose of cognitive functions function screening. So we've been using this for a while now, um, not as part of a study, but just as uh, a, a way of, of helping to screen uh, patients and get an idea of how uh, how where they stand with their cognitive function and mental acuity. And so we will you know we we sometimes well we screen the pe- screen people before we start treatment. And we treat the hearing loss properly. And if we screen them again later, we often find improvements in uh, some of these, at least a few of these, the five parameters that we're screening for. And it's we're not doing it as part of a study, so we don't have you know a group, you know, large group data. So you just so you just hit the nail on the head, Doctor Cardano, which yeah. is anecdotal data. That that's pretty yeah. much how every scientific idea comes about. I mean, go back to Newton, who just threw up an apple and it came down and that got him thinking about gravity, right? So we've already made the observation in our own practices that, hmm, I remember doing this test a few months ago and I re- I can pull up my patient scores and now I, I've done the test again. And the only variable to change is that the, the person is treating their hearing loss and now I see the scores are improving. Look, that's mm. anecdotal data. That's not something that we can stand upon and say, we now know this to be true. That's right. the point of this study is to say, hey, all you practices out there that are doing this, because you understand hearing is about the brain, not about the ear, because you are already have this as part of your daily practice, because you're already in the top tier of hearing healthcare providers, Let's get some data and let's publish this so that more people out there. Look, Larry, you Mm. are in the top 10% of hearing healthcare providers that actually screens cognitive function, that can have a conversation with their patient about potential risk for cognitive decline and dementia. So you're already in the upper echelon of hearing healthcare providers, which is why I love you and your team. Now we're going to take the data you're collecting day in and day out, and we're going to make great use of it. And I know together we are going to influence the future of hearing healthcare, which is not about you or I. It's about the 50 million people who need our help. All right. I'm I'm, want, I'm going to be asking you, uh, but I think that's very important. But I want, I'm going to be asking you about uh, who might qualify to participate in the study. But I just before I get to that. It, one, I'd like to get to one more question, only because I think when I know when I talk to some patients about the the risk of cognitive decline and dementia that's posed by hearing treatment of hearing loss, 
um, I get a look on their face of like confusion. I don't know if they really understand. Is there a way for you to give us a brief explanation of what's happening between the ear and the brain? And uh, what do we think is a reason why hearing loss could have an effect on mental acuity? So that that's a great question. And the thing is, is that I, I genuinely believe, and if you look at all the literature, I think you'd come to the same conclusion. There is no one single cause that says, here, you have hearing loss, and this is why you're at risk for cognitive decline and dementia. And by mm-hmm. the way, that risk, just having hearing loss, increases your chances of developing dementia by 200 to 500%. Right. So this isn't just a a small increased chance. This is a huge increased chance. So let me quickly go through the three things that I think will make sense to everybody. Hearing loss socially isolates people. Right. You and I see patients every day who they opt out of going to a party. They opt out of going to restaurants because of background noise. They opt out of social interactions Mm -hmm. That social isolation is a major risk factor for developing dementia. So that right there, hearing loss, social isolation, dementia. That's that's a, a, a <laughs> pardon the pun. That's a no-brainer. Okay. So here's the second thing. There was a study, actually, uh, several of them have come out now that have looked at the size of the brain mm. in people with hearing loss versus people who don't have hearing loss. So so age matched older adults 60 plus people with hearing loss their brain shrinks, right? Now in the medical community we call this cerebral atrophy. That cerebral atrophy is a hallmark sign of dementia, right? If you've ever studied the normal brain and compared it to a brain with dementia, it's much smaller. So we now know not only social isolation, but people with hearing loss can suffer from cerebral atrophy, which is a hallmark feature of dementia. So that's number two. Now, here's number three. Again, I think this is going to really easily make sense to everybody. When you have hearing loss, you work extra hard at hearing, right? You, You tend to lean in a little bit. You tend to intuitively read lips, right? You you don't go take a lip reading class. When you have hearing loss, you just automatically get good at it because you have to, right? And and masks uh, got in the way, especially during COVID, where people were used to reading lips. Um, So Mm. with hearing loss, you're, you're literally missing parts of what people are saying. And so your brain will automatically try to fill in the missing pieces. It will plug in and say, well, does tree make sense or he or she Mm. or T? And then your brain's also lip reading. So it's putting in all this extra effort. That is what we call cognitive overload. And there's been many studies that have shown this. You're working the brain too hard. One of my, one of my sayings that you've heard, you've certainly heard me say. Living with hearing loss and the impact on your brain is like driving 60 miles an hour in second gear. Now, funny thing is, is only people over the age of 40 know what I mean by second gear, because now all the cars are automatic. (laughs) But anybody out there listening will understand you're wearing down the gears. So just to review, social isolation, cerebral atrophy, and overworking the brain are all known risk factors for dementia and hearing loss increases all three of those. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so again, I, I wanted to get to who qualifies to participate, but just one more quick question. Uh, I don't want to forget that we work with a number of physicians uh, who will be seeing this interview. Great. And I just wonder uh, if there's anything you would say to a physician who may have patients with concerns about hearing loss or cognitive decline, even dementia, uh, about this topic in general or about this study? Sure. So so here are the two most important messages. When When I have the opportunity to meet with a primary care physician, and if I get five minutes of their time, here's what I want to get across to them, right? So number one, ears and rears. 
Okay. I always say that. And the doctor just looks at me and laughs and they say, what do you mean? I say, look, what do you tell every one of your patients when they turn 50, right? It's a Mm -hmm. must that you must get a colonoscopy screening. Well, guess what? At the age of 50 is also when you should have your first hearing screening. This has been recommended by the American Academy of Audiology. This has been considered by the American Medical Association. So, so that's the first point. The second is we can be a resource for you and your patients. Most primary care physicians, they don't have the time to do cognitive screenings. They don't have the time to really dive in and understand how their patient processes things, how their brain works, their memory, their selective attention. And we can help relieve that burden and help them help more patients. So that's another message. I guess I'll I'll add a third, which is... If you have a patient who you already think is at risk for cognitive decline in dementia, there have been multiple studies indicating that treating hearing loss can slow the progression, right? So not only prevent, but slow the progression of the disease. So so I get this all the time. My loved one has already been diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment or dementia. Is there anything I can do? And I just... Uh, yes, over a resounding yes, because we can help to slow that decline. And so that's my message to any physician out there who's looking to help their patients more. And like you and I, mm-hmm. every physician genuinely got into this to help people. And here's a great right. resource for them to help more patients. Absolutely. And I would say also, you know, for, for physicians that are interested in this and may have a uh, patients that have their concern about these topics, uh, I think we would certainly encourage them to uh, give that patient the information about signing up for the study to see whether they qualify or not. Absolutely. Uh, and so maybe that leads us into, maybe you can just just mention quickly, who qualifies to um, to participate in this study? So, so really easy. The, re- the requirements are actually pretty easy. One is you must be over 18, okay? If you're over 18 and you have perceived hearing loss or tinnitus. Now, what does that mean? That means if your hearing is not what it used to be, if you feel like it's more difficult to hear in a noisy restaurant, if you feel like you're the only one who's struggling, if your significant other or your family is on you, maybe about your hearing loss, maybe because you turn the TV up a little too loud, you'd be a perfect candidate to be in this study. Now, in addition to the person who's who's never gone through the hearing healthcare process, we also welcome patients who are currently treating their hearing loss, but they're not 100% satisfied, right? So you and I deal with this every day. We see patients who, for whatever reason, were given the wrong medical recommendation, were provided the wrong treatment technology, or perhaps they're living with technology or hearing aids that are, dare I say, five years old, seven, 10 years old, right? We prescribe our patients a new treatment program every three and a half to four years. So if you're in that category where you're not hearing your best, you've got older technology, please, we want you to. So it's mm-hmm. open to to new people who want to who wanna really get at how's their brain functioning and how can they do it better? How can they hear better, be part of the conversation, but also that patient who is just feeling underserved. And so we welcome both of you to come in. There is no, um, right. Other than that, there's really no barrier to entry. Right. Right. And we want to, you know, you'll be doing um, the field of, of service, but you'll also have a chance to benefit from proper treatment of hearing loss and the effect on cognitive function. Um, so let me just not forget to mention that for viewers here, if if you or someone, a fa- friend or family member, uh, you think might be interested in participating in this study, very simple, just go to hearingbrainstudy.com. That's hearingbrainstudy.com. Or you can call our office at 516 604 Three five four one. It's five one six six zero four three five four one, and we'll fill you in. We'll answer any questions you have, and then we'll take it from there. And I just, I just want to say to anybody 
who's watched this to anybody who's considering being a part of the future of healthcare, of helping more patients to prevent decline, I genuinely thank you from the bottom of my heart because this is the type of information that I wish I had to help my grandmother who passed away over a decade ago, to help my Aunt Donna who has been recently diagnosed. Please, if you can contribute a little bit of your time if this is something that you want to pay it forward for a loved one that you've lost, mm-hmm. I welcome you to this study. And I genuinely thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I, I would second that. So um, I, I appreciate that. Uh, so I think uh, our time is almost up. Uh, so once again, I want to thank you, Dr. Darrell, for your time today. Uh, my staff and I look forward to helping patients in this study to benefit in the short term. Uh, by having proper treatment and preventing cognitive decline, but also helping in the long term, the 50 million people who are struggling with hearing loss. And um, again, thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Take care.